In this lecture, we'll discuss sampling in greater detail. Earlier, we learned that our basic digital filter consists of a sampling switch, a quantizer, a digital filter, and D2A converter. For the sake of simplicity, we will ignore the effects of the quantizer on filtering. Since we are focusing on sampling, we will assume that our digital filter allows y sub n to equal x sub n, so we can focus on how to exactly reproduce x sub n after we convert back and forth from the digital domain. Therefore, remove the filter for this discussion. It is easier to discuss the intricacies of sampling if we look at the frequency domain. Since we are using the frequency domain, we will also treat our D2A converter as an analog filter G sub A of omega. We learned earlier that the discrete time Fourier transform is related to the Fourier transform according to the following formula. You absolutely need to be able to understand this formula and its implications. Graphically, this equation tells us that we produce replicates of x sub a of omega at every 2 pi interval. We scale the Fourier transform by 1 over t. And finally, we scale the width of our ft by a factor of t. To better understand the two scaling factors, let's look at an example. Let's suppose that our x sub a of omega is an ideal low-pass filter with band limit 3000 pi radians per second. <clears throat> if we sample at 4000 hertz, the band limit of the digital filter would be 3 pi over 4. We would also scale the height of the digital filter to 4,000. If we changed our sampling frequency to 6,000 Hz, the band limit of the digital filter would change to pi over 2, and the height of the filter would scale to 6,000. Notice that the area under the curve is the same for all three spectra. Let's recap. Our input x of t has this Fourier transform. When we sample x of t, x sub n will have the following Fourier transform that is scaled and replicated. As a quick side note, since we are plotting x sub d and y sub d on analog frequencies, we need to divide our digital frequencies by t. To recover y sub a, we need to filter our y sub d by a filter g sub d. Let's investigate what type of filter we need. To recover y sub a, we need to remove the replicates and rescale y sub d to remove the 1 over t scaling factor. We can accomplish both of these tasks with a low-pass filter with a band limit of pi over t that eliminates the replicates created by sampling. The low-pass filter would also need to have height t to counteract the vertical scaling caused by sampling. Therefore, our g sub a of omega would look like this. If we take the inverse Fourier transform of g sub a of omega, we discover that our d2a g sub a of t must be a sinc function. <clears throat> 